25 before the hour. This hour is being sponsored by Irish Dave. We are hanging with the president here tonight on the State of the Union, which actually sounds more like a campaign speech, but that's all right. That's when Barack Obama is at his best. Let's rejoin NBC. To combat climate change. Climate change? What? John Boner just sits there. The Republicans just sit there. What climate change? What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Now, it's true that no single event makes a trend. Oh, yeah? But the fact is, the 12 hottest years on record have all come in the last 15. Oh, yeah? Heat waves, droughts, wildfires, floods, hurricanes, all are now more frequent and more intense. We can choose to believe that Superstorm Sandy and, and the most severe drought in decades and the worst wildfires some states have ever seen were all just a freak coincidence. Yep. Or we can choose to believe in the overwhelming judgment of science and act before it's too late. <laughs> really? All right. How about that Keystone Pipeline? Ah! Now, the good news is we can make meaningful progress on this issue while driving strong economic growth. Yeah. I urge this Congress to get together, pursue a bipartisan market-based solution to climate change. Sure. Like the one John McCain and Joe Lieberman worked on together a few years ago. Yeah. But if Congress won't act soon to protect future generations, I will. I will direct... Whoa. I will direct my cabinet to come up with executive actions we can take now and in the future to reduce pollution, prepare our communities for the consequences of climate change, and speed the transition to more sustainable sources of energy. Take that, John Boner. And four years ago, other countries dominated the clean energy market and the jobs that came with it. And we've begun to change that. Last year, wind energy added nearly half of all new power capacity in America. So let's generate even more. Yeah. Solar energy gets cheaper by the year. Let's drive down costs even further. As long as countries like China keep going all in on clean energy, so must we. In the meantime, the natural gas boom has led to cleaner power and greater energy independence. We need to encourage that. Yeah. And that's why my administration will keep cutting red tape and speeding up new oil and gas permits. Oh, no! That's really? got to be part of an all-of-the-above plan. But I also want to work with this Congress to but encourage the research and technology that helps natural gas burn even cleaner uh, and protects our air and our water. So, so Mr. President wants to address global warming, but he's going to speed up permits for gas and oil drilling. So tonight I propose we use uh, our oil uh, uh, Oh, never mind. Energy security trust that will drive new research and technology to shift our cars and trucks off oil for good. On if a nonpartisan coalition of CEOs and retired generals and admirals can get behind this idea, then so can we. Let's take their advice and free our families and businesses from the painful spikes in gas prices we put up with for far too long. Well, in order to do that, M Mr. Obama, you're going to have to get the Wall Street speculators out of the uh, gasoline business. I mean, that has nothing to do with oil production or gas. Oh, never mind. We'll work with the states to do it. Those states with the best ideas to create jobs and lower energy bills by constructing more efficient buildings will receive federal support to help make that happen. America's energy sector is just one part of an aging infrastructure badly in need of repair. Okay, yeah. Ask any CEO where they'd rather locate and hire. A country with deteriorating roads and bridges or one with high-speed rail and internet. Deteriorating high roads and bridges. Yeah. Self-healing power grids. No, no, not that. The CEO of Siemens America, a company that brought hundreds of new jobs to North Carolina, said that if we upgrade our infrastructure, they'll bring even more jobs. Well, that's the attitude of a lot of companies all around the world. And I know you want these job-creating projects in your district. I've seen all those ribbon cuttings. <laughs> <laughs> so, tonight, 
I propose a fix it first program to put people to work as soon as possible on our most urgent repairs. Okay. Like the nearly 70,000 structurally deficient bridges across the country. And to make sure taxpayers don't shoulder the whole burden, I'm also proposing a partnership to rebuild America that attracts private capital to upgrade what our businesses need most. Modern ports to move our goods. Modern pipelines to withstand a storm. Modern schools worthy of our children. Let's prove there's no better place to do business than here in the United States of America. And let's start right away. All we right. can get this done. All right, let's do it Monday. And part of our rebuilding effort must also involve our housing sector. Yeah, okay. The good news is our housing market is finally healing from the collapse of 2007. Home prices are rising at the fastest pace in six years. Oh, good. Home purchases are up nearly 50%. Uh huh. And construction is expanding again. But even with mortgage rates near a 50 year low, too many families with solid credit who want to buy a home are being rejected. Too many families who never missed a payment and want to refinance are being told no. Why is that? That's holding our entire economy back. We need to fix it. <laughs> right now, there's a bill in this Congress that would give every responsible homeowner in America yeah. the chance to save $3,000 a year by refinancing at today's rates. Yeah. Democrats and Republicans have supported it before. Not anymore. So what are we waiting for? Take a vote and send me that bill. Yeah. You just see Boner's going to rush out and do that tomorrow. Why would that be a partisan issue? <laughs> Helping folks refinance. Right now, overlapping regulations keep responsible young families from buying their first home. That's true. What's holding us back? Let's streamline the process and help our economy grow. Yeah. Now, these initiatives in manufacturing, energy, infrastructure, housing, all these things will help entrepreneurs and small business owners expand and create new jobs. But none of them will matter unless we also equip our citizens with the skills and training to fill those jobs. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll applaud for that. And that has to start at the earliest possible age. Yeah. You know, study after study shows that the sooner a child begins learning, the better he or she does down the road. Oh, here comes the communism. Today, fewer than three in ten four-year-olds are enrolled in a high-quality preschool program. Here comes the communism. Most middle-class parents can't afford a few hundred bucks a week for a private preschool. And for poor kids <laughs> who need help the most, this lack of access to preschool education can shadow them for the rest of their lives. So tonight, I propose working with states to make high-quality preschool available to every single child in America. Government schools! Oh, no! That's something we should be able to do. No! Put them in Christian schools, maybe! Okay, some Jewish schools, but, you know. Every dollar we invest in high-quality early childhood education can save more than $7 later on by boosting graduation rates. Reducing can you imagine um, the minds of the Republicans, the teabaggers, the right-wingers sitting there in this chamber listening to this? Um, people at home on the right are not listening to it. They're, uh, I don't know, what's on tonight, Kathy? Is this Dancing with the Stars tonight or something? I don't know. But... Um, you know the guy, the, the president, the guy, the guy's making some good, some good points. He really is, but that stuff is not going to happen here. I don't know why he doesn't confront the real issues. You know, uh, uh, just just drag it out and say, listen, this country's going to hell for so many of us unless these filthy Republicans do something. Why did they do that? 
I mean, is is there some law against that, so to speak? Uh, let's listen to some more. Right now, countries like Germany focus on graduating their high school students with the equivalent of a technical degree from one of our community colleges. So those German kids, they're ready for a job when they graduate high school. Yeah. They've been trained for the jobs that are there. It's all socialism over there, too. Now it's schools like P-TECH in Brooklyn, a collaboration between New York Public Schools and City University of New York and IBM. Students will graduate with a high school diploma and an associate's degree in computers or engineering. We need to give every American student opportunities like this. And four years ago... Four years ago, we started Race to the Top, the competition that convinced almost every state to develop smarter curricula. We'll be right back.